All right, so the Bissell Company has been at the forefront of making pet cleaning products for years and years and years. And its Pet Foundation's goal is to find every animal a loving home. Boy, birds of a feather right. fly together. <laughs> that's, like us. that's what we <laughs> love to do here. And here to tell us more and share their message of giving pets a second chance is its founder, Kathy Bissell. Welcome, Welcome Kathy. Kathy. We're so glad that you are here. You just fit here. You like this. I really is, do. This is a home built for you. This um, is. I love this. Um, I know you are a pet lover through and through, but there was there's one particular one we want to ask you about. Bear. Yes. Bear this changed is, my life. Bear. Uh, yeah. Bear oh. is a rescue that came into your life, and just tell us a little bit about how he arrived. So I was hosting a, a charity event for animals and he was um, at a shelter and he walked up, somebody brought him up to me with my dogs and nobody reacted except my husband. And, uh, <laughs> so I was like, this dog has to come home with us. This is a great match. And he was just a really beautiful dog. I could not understand why someone would give up a dog that was this incredible to a shelter. I found out they, they got a puppy. So they That's didn't it. want the older dog anymore. Oh, oh my God. And I was I devastated. Hear. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. I mean, but it, he picked you. He, he picked he me. He picked you. Yeah. yeah. And but he truly changed your life and changed the lives of so many countless other animals. Because I mean, yeah, an animal can change someone's life, but you really went full force, full steam ahead, and you created quite a foundation. Yeah, he did. He he had an impact on me. I couldn't understand why they gave him up, and I thought I want everyone to know that there are great animals in shelters. So that's what's that's my whole it, goal, starting started. the foundation, yeah. yeah. Well, in your opinion, what, what do you think is the most effective way to address pet homelessness? Well, so spay and neuter is super important, you know, keeping the population down, that's really, really important. And, you know, every pet coming out of a shelter is spayed and neutered, um, but people should take that upon themselves so they don't have accidents and puppies running around when they're not needed or wanted. Um, and the other thing I would say is adoption. Adoption is really important. If everybody went into the shelter and adopted, we wouldn't have this problem, and it yeah. would keep the population down. Just visit a shelter. Right. Just yes. visit Don't even go in there thinking right. you're going to just yeah. go in and visit yes. them. They can use like. your company yeah. so true. and see what it's like. So the foundation that you have, which is wonderful, how can how does it help shelters, or how does shelters get help from them? Well, shelters can become a partner with us, and we would check them out. If they're a 501c3, they can become a partner, and uh -huh. then we work together to help fund some of our mission which is or all of our mission which is spay and neuter microchipping adoption so and foster care that's yes, so important it's so foster important. care yes yeah. i think what i think a lot of people don't know is that rescues and shelters don't get a lot of money. They struggle right. and they're trying to yeah. do the best they can and oftentimes it pulls from their resources and so just having a backing, that support of somewhere to turn it's is so, important. so it is really amazing. I mean, and, and what you guys have done, you have made quite an impact on on shelters in all 50 states, by the way. This is no small thing. <laughs> by giving them grants and so many other things, if, if a local shelter would like to apply for one of your grants, what do they need to do? They would just go on to BissellPetFoundation.org and apply for a grant, and then we'll check them out, make sure they fit within our guidelines. We have kind of a partnership, and that's it. It's really simple. It's really well, We're so very proud of our number one failure when it comes to foster, <laughs> oh, Larissa. And I with all, this is when with failure's all, a good thing. I mean, I, know. Such a <laughs> I wear failure with pride. <laughs> I'm with you. Good, good, good. It is the best kind of failure. If She's you're going to fail at something, yeah. be it a Go fun. down okay. and okay. Right. Right. All right. right. Just it's a happy failure. <laughs> don't hold anything back. How many dogs have you had through your house? Oh, I 60? don't. I plead the fifth. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. about 60 <laughs> dogs go through your house. I've had a lot 60 of dogs. Not at one time. But yeah. Of course not. But yes. We verge on hoarding them. Yeah, I know, right? But I actually have a question because you help shelters on so that's you know a national level but you also have gone into so many disaster zones and we you know part of our adoption ever after is featuring an adoptable animal every yeah. day and many of them because of all the disasters that happened this year came from the hurricanes yeah, and all right. the horrible things that were going on so how did that come about for you guys to go help so we actually didn't go down to the that area but our partners were pulling up uh, animals, bringing them north so they could be saved. So the shelters in the south were full. Mm -hmm. And in order to make room for the devastation, they had to empty the shelters. So they came up north and our partners contacted us and we kind of had you know some back and forth and we decided to host an adoption event for all of the animals that came north. We had one day, it wasn't oh, just nice. for those animals, but all the animals in their oh. shelter. And I think we had like 16 oh. shelters that day. Oh my goodness. Wow. That we worked with. It and was great. And you also 
helped a, a woman who was trying to transport the animals, didn't yes, you? Yes, yes. So there was a woman in Louisiana, her name is Stacy Elliman, and she runs the St. Landry Parish Animal Control. And it's uh, an area that needs a lot of help, and she gets a lot of animals. Oh. And she, um, she actually has a truck that she transports 125 pets at a time, wow. and her truck was breaking down. Mm. Oh. So she called me, and we become friends. She's never asked for anything, and I was like, I want to help you. That's a big deal, 125 yeah. pets at a time. So she gets a lot of animals coming her. She takes care of a lot of parishes. That's so it. what happened? So <laughs> she got a truck fixed. Her, her engine and transmission broke, and so we fixed it. You did all, you did automotive oh, repair as well? You died. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. Under that hood and I fixed it. <laughs> the other thing that that allows is that now any money she gets from any other can go to gas and can go That's to cleaning true. supplies. Uh, can sure. go to the things that add up that you don't even think That's about. That's right. I know. And she and has a lot of need there. Yeah. And, right. and, and just going back to what you're saying, too, when you think about the natural disasters that happen, so many times we're just about, you know, we're trying to take care of one another. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Their pets are forgotten. They are forgotten. And you think about they're lost, they're lonely, they're away no. from, their, from their owners, and they want a place to stay and just to be warm. So true. And, and it's yeah. so it's, important to have people out there like you, the foundation, giving. Yeah. Back. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks to you and your family. Everybody does their part. If everybody just yes. took a piece of this and owned it and helped, I mean, even if it's small, it would be. Huge. Yes. Yeah. No pet left behind. No that pet. is your yeah. motto. And we appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So every year you do an amazing fundraiser. This has been going on for 13 years now. Your Blocktail fundraiser. Yes. 2018 so year job. So anything special? Well, we always have uh, hosts that are there, and it's just special because we're hoping to raise more money, more awareness for adoption. Um, people come and they wear their blue jeans and they bring their dog and they drink beer and you know it's, so it's fun. like a festival. It's fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. You yeah. might and end up with another dog. Along. I know. And you might end up with another dog. <laughs> you could. <Careful>. You <laughs> have to. Absolutely. You should come. I know. I was going to say I'm. I'm going to. You don't even know this, but I'm inviting you. You're to <laughs> You put a little I'll country music on. Right. She'll be there yes. in her cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah. She'll yeah. definitely yeah. end up with you another dog. Do well, listen, your love for we share your love for animals and and Kathy has done so much. She's inspired. Uh, so many people along the way. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk actually about some of the new Bissell products that they, she's created for our pets because we want a clean house. We want our pets to be clean. Um, so stick around. Uh, we're going to show you that a little bit later on in the right. show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Kathy. All right. So uh, coming up, Maria is here helping us get ready for St. Patty's Day, right, Maria? <laughs> Yes, I'm bringing the luck of the Irish to your own home with this DIY St. Patrick's Day tablescape that's fun for everyone in the family. Then Empire's Grace Byers is sharing how she landed more than just a hit show during pilot season. Now this is the stuff that Hallmark movies are made of. I'm not oh. kidding. That's a little hint at what she landed. Woo. <laughs> Next, we're heading into the kitchen for some finger licking good food with Danielle Cardis. Okay, you guys, we're making these pulled chicken sammies. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so come right back.